Okay, uh, I think we can start. So to be correct with the timetable, and maybe others who can, uh, can join us uh, uh, ongoing. Um, we are. I thank you, every everybody that is present and uh, is uh, part of this uh, webinar that we have uh, preparated in collaboration with the State Archi Archive of Albania. Uh, at first, I will uh, share with you some information about uh, resilience uh, and uh, the role of our university in this project. Uh, and then uh, the colleague Sokol Junga will uh, present uh, the, the main topic of the webinar for today. Uh, resilience is uh, an infrastructure and a research infrastructure for today uh, in collaboration with the Central State Archive of Albania will present a short history and its collection of religious documents uh, as we have agreed with the colleagues from the Central State Archive it is a beginning and we hope that there will be other activities to show all the information and all the documentation uh, in this uh, archive, that is the main uh, documentary uh, archive in Albania. Uh, why resilience? What is resilience at first and then why? Resilience is a unique inter interdisciplinary and invigorating research infrastructure for all religious studies. It's uh, building a high performance platform, supplying evolving tools and big data to scholars from all the scientific disciplines crossing religions in their uh, diachronical and synchronical variety. Uh, why resilience? It's because uh, involvement, need for broader and more structured involvement of researchers in religious studies. We have seen that in Albania there are not uh, real studies in religious, but uh, maybe indirect studies. And this is important especially for uh, our uh, researchers and our scholars to at first to, to know residents and uh, maybe to become part and to use all the data that uh, residents uh, can bring to them. Easy access. Uh, to digital as well as physical data on religion studies and to advance tools in knowing and understanding this data. Knowledge as a shared discourse through issues related to uh, religious diversity and what is uh, very important, uh, mutual understanding, increased need for mutual understanding in which scholars play a crucial role. Uh, knowing uh, helps to, uh, to resolve diversity problems and uh, to have a mutual understanding. Our consortium, here are the main uh, institutions part of the consortium, but uh, other institutions are joining uh, it uh, always more as uh, the resilience has become part of, of the European research uh, program. ESPRI, so it's, uh, it's growing as a consortium and uh, it's not a simple project, it's an infrastructure that is very important. Our team here in Albanian University is
Do you hear me? Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. I didn't understand. Is there an echo? Yes. There is an echo. Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, If there is a problem. Do you hear me? OK, I'm sorry, I don't know why. Okay. And uh, maybe in the last slides of the, my presentation and so-called can continue. Okay, resilience services, research uh, enhancing services, research enabling services and data management and data center and resilience for you for all the researchers for collection managers and librarians the children makers workers uh, in uh, religious communities i don't want to be long because the main topic is not uh, only knowing resilience but bringing to you some information uh, through resilience i thank you and uh, the floor is for the colleagues soko chunga and after that, maybe some questions and answers. Thank you, Genta. Uh, to present the uh, religious uh, documents, the collections of the religious documents that are preserved at the Central State Archive of uh, Albania here in Tirana. Uh, I prepared this presentation together with my colleague sitting here next by me, uh, Mr. Uh, Rezard Mezani. We work, work both of us in the, the department of the uh, rare languages or the department that deals with the documents written in rare languages as the direct, directorate of the Central State Archive, which is under the um, works under the auspices of the uh, general directorate of the archives. Uh, it's a bureaucratic um, difference, small bureaucratic difference, but it's important to uh, to mention it. Uh, now, let me share the presentation that I have here. So uh, we're going to speak about the uh, institution where we are working and where our, uh, these documents are preserved and also uh, we'll give some, some information, uh, some specific information about the uh, collections of the religious documents that we have here. Now uh, it's important to mention the date of the liberation of the independence of uh, uh, Albania, which is uh, November 28th. Uh, until this period, uh, the uh, Albanian territories were uh, part of the Ottoman Empire. Of course, the uh, independence did not bring uh, all of the territories out of the uh, Ottoman Empire, but that's the beginning of the, uh, let's say, modern Albanian state. Uh, that's the beginning of the existence of the uh, Albania as a uh, country uh, different from the uh, Ottoman Empire. Um, after the uh, liberation, the, after the independence, sorry, uh, there was a project on creating the first uh, the first central state archive that would collect the uh, documents created by the uh, government activity uh, in Albania. Of course, it did not uh, function because the government was very short-lived. Uh, then the uh, first world war started, and uh, it was. Uh, not the best conditions on creating or for creating a central state archive or any other state archive. 
Uh, there was a second attempt in 1932 to create a state or central state or general state archive, which uh, failed because of the of different uh, circumstances of the period. Uh, during the years 1913 up to 1944, the archives in Albania were functioning in a uh, decentralized system where each institution had its own archive, uh, either as a substructure attached to an office or either as an independent structure, structure of the uh, institution. Uh, it is mostly due to the economic and the uh, political weakness in Albania during this period that the uh, uh, brought also the ir irregularity of this uh, part of the uh, of the institution, which is the archive. Uh, in in uh, November 1944, Albania was liberated from the uh, Nazis, uh, and the we had the independence from the. Yeah, and the a new government and a new independence. Sorry. Uh, so we had the independence in 1944 from the uh, Nazis, and the a new government started to function uh, in January of 1945 uh, after general elections of December 1944. Uh, the first state archive was created in June 8, 1949, uh, but its impact on uh, archival work was really uh, vague. That's why in 1941, the, 1951, the state archive became part of the Ministry of the Interior Affairs, uh, and in 1963, since even this uh, institution could not bring the uh, uh, the uh, awaited results, uh, there was created the General Directorate of Archives in 1963 that uh, was functioning under the auspices of the Council of uh, Ministers. And this reality keeps on going until uh, nowadays. Uh, there is a legal basis on which the General di director, uh, Directorate of Archives uh, functioned, which is the law on the archives of the year 2003. Uh, the general directorate of the archives is the highest public archival authority in Albania. Uh, nowadays, our uh, national fund of, uh, of uh, uh, documents uh, is approximately 40 kilometers of shelves long. This is how we measure in archives the volume of documents that we preserve. Uh, there are in total uh, 139 archivists working at the moment uh, for this institution. Uh, they have to be specialized at least uh, in archivistics, um, with, which is uh, a course of a short course of specialization on uh, protocol and archivistics, uh, or uh, they have to be. Um, they have to hold a degree on uh, history and a master degree on archivistics. There is also a master degree, uh, a master program on archivistics, uh, developed in collaboration with the Faculty of History and Philology of the Tirana University. Uh, how can you use the archives? Uh, we have a general uh, inventory, which works in a physical and electronic form. There is a thematic index, there is an index of anthroponyms and an index of toponyms available for the researchers. They are both interchanged in uh, electronic and uh, physical uh, form. It is important to mention here that these uh, instrumenta studiorum, uh, these tools uh, were mainly produced during the period of the uh, communist regime. That's how sometimes uh, the communist ideology of the time sneaks out through different types of uh, prescription. Of description, sorry. What do we preserve? That's a very general uh, statement. We preserve mostly historical archives, which is the part of the documents uh, that are inherited from the Ottoman uh, administrative institutions. We preserve re, re, uh, religious uh, documents from the religious institutions and religious communities and also personal archives. Uh, we preserve different types of administrative archives 
mainly produced by the local institutions from the year 1912 to nowadays. And also we preserve copies acquired from different archives uh, from the uh, Europe mostly, uh, documents that are mostly related to Albania or the Albanians, and also few documents that were uh, bought from the archives abroad uh, or donated to the Central State Archive from their uh, legal owners. Uh, since the archive started to function in the year 1949, uh, the gathering uh, and centralization of these document, documents uh, was developed in different periods in different means. So, uh, mostly the uh, institutional documents, administrative uh, documents, they came at the, uh, under, under the preservation of the Central State Archive as inherited uh, documents from older institutions. Uh, then there is a, another category of, uh, of documents that were received as gifts from individuals. They were uh, at some moments after the uh, 1944, when the uh, war of the classes started to function uh, during the communist regime in Albania, they were confiscated from uh, individuals that were sentenced as enemies uh, of the people uh, from the communist regime, of course. Then uh, there is another category of documents that were donated out of free will or under the pressure uh, from the religious uh, institutions prior to 1967. Uh, it's prior to 1967 because uh, in March, April of the year 1967, there was a, a started a, a physical also war against the religious institutions and their uh, um, heritage. Uh, and the, as a result of this uh, revolution for the creation creation of the new men, uh, new socialist or communist men, the uh, religious institutions ceased to exist in Albania until the year 1990, in the uh, December of the year 1990. Then we have also uh, administrative documents created from. Uh, the uh, different governments and institutions from the uh, end December, November and December of the year 1944 to nowadays. Now, let's go at the religious documents that brought us here. I just started with the founds of the uh, Orthodox community because uh, some of the oldest documents are dating from uh, this community. Uh, the way that we are preserving the documents, it, or we are um, processing the documents in the archive, is like we, we try to follow uh, a mixture of uh, the French school of archivistics and the Soviet school of archivistics. It's a mixture of it all. Uh, we have separated the documents according to their uh, administrative uh, units, which in the case of the uh, Orthodox community is the metropolis. So we have Quite all the documents of the religious community have been separated uh, among the metropolis of Berat, the vice metropolis of Duras, the Orthodox community of Elbasan, the monastery of St. John of Vladimir, the metropolis of Drinopolis or Girokastra, and then the monastery of Kamena, metropolis of Korcha, the Orthodox community of Skodera, and we have a collection of manuscripts, uh, Byzantine and post Byzantine manuscripts, which is called the Collection of the Codices of Albania. And there is, of course, a series, a fund of, uh, 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 of documents named the Autocephalus Orthodox Church of Albania. There is also that type of font uh, that exists in every archive. It's like an uh, uh, appendicitis of the archive. Whatever we don't know where to uh, to settle, we put it in a collection of documents. In our uh, case, it's a collection of documents dating prior to 1912, because uh, it's in theory all the other documents that are produced after the year 1912 they should have uh, found. Uh, they should they, there should be an institution uh, where to place them. And in the case in this case in the uh, in the case of the collection of documents prior to 1912, we do not exactly know uh, because it's uh, sometimes the documents are processed in a difficult way 
uh, and you cannot understand from the title the content of the uh, of the folder of the specific folder you have to manually go and check what's there so we haven't done that work uh, until now the types of documents that they are preserved from the Orthodox community are uh, mainly liturgical books, uh, books of Holy Scriptures, manuscripts and, and printed books, uh, musical books, uh, canonical law books, and there, there are the regesta of the incoming and uh, outcome, or outcoming correspondence, uh, the regesta of the religious councils and the re religious courts, Financial register because as uh, all institutions, also the uh, religious institutions, they have to keep record records of their uh, economy and finances. Uh, register of baptisms, marriages, and funerals, and also there is a collection of preserved uh, uh, of books that is separated. Some of them preserved at the at the library of the Central State, State Archive, and some of them are the uh, uh, separated into different fonts that. Uh, correspond to the religious uh, forms of the archive. Uh, it is similar also the condition of the uh, documents of the Catholic uh, community. They are separated uh, accordingly to the, uh, following the uh, local administration, church administration of the, of the community. Uh, there exists the font of the Archbishop Bishopric of uh, Douros, Archbishop of, of Skodra, and then there is the Franciscan Order, the Jesuit Order, the Diocese of Sapa, and the Bay of Mirdita. And of course, there are also documents um, belonging to the Catholic community that are separated, that are um, uh, shared, that are placed under the collection of documents prior to 1912. Uh, it is the same case also for the uh, Catholic community. Uh, this type of documents are regesta of the uh, properties, regesta of protocols and meetings, uh, correspondence, uh, administrative and spiritual uh, issues, of course, regesta of baptisms, confirmations, marriages and funerals, and also there is a quantity of uh, printed books uh, preserved at the uh, library of the um, of the Central State Archive, or at, uh, uh, separated into different fonts. The history of the uh, Muslim communities is a little bit dif different. Uh, before the independence of Albania, the Muslim communities did not have the uh, they were not organized the same as the uh, Christian communities because of the their peculiarities. The, the Muslim communities did not uh, did not have the need to to create this local administration or their documents were not uh, always private. Uh, we have to keep in mind that during the Ottoman Empire, uh, religion and state, so Muslim religion and state were quite sometimes the same thing. That is why we do not have register of births or register of marriages or uh, of deaths. Uh, kept by the uh, Muslim communities because it was the government that was doing that business for them. Or uh, they do not have a, a census of their population because it was, again, the, the government that was doing the census. Uh, of course, we have to accept that in the case of the Muslim communities, the archive has not, has not done a very good job. It is part of us, or mostly part of Results duty because he can also read and understand the documents written in Ottoman and in Turkish uh, Turkish language. That's the, the biggest part of these documents uh, are written in those languages. Albanian has started to be used uh, after the independence, and also it was not uh, a clear cut between uh, Ottoman or Turkish language and the Albanian language in 1912. Nevertheless, the documents still uh, continue to exist written in uh, other languages than Albanian. So uh, there are these uh, four main uh, series or forms of documents that we preserve. Uh, the Muslim community, Bekteshi community, the Halveti uh, sect, which is part of the, uh, of the Sufi um, tariqats of the Muslim uh, community, 
There is a collection, a large collection of uh, Arabic, Persian, and uh, Ottoman documents. Uh, pardon the D there, it should be Ottoman without the D. And of course, there are documents belonging to the Muslim community that have been placed under the collection of documents prior to 1912. Types of documents that there exist still. Again, here, uh, movable and removable pro uh, properties, uh, protocols and correspondences, and also meetings of spiritual uh, leaders, uh, administrative and spiritual issues. Uh, uh, the, the regest of financial issues that deal with the management of schools, of, of the vakufs, uh, and uh, of the orphanages. Also, uh, there are the refractories for the poor, which I'm sorry if this is not the proper, the uh, most, the best term in English. And there is also a collection of printed books that is preserved at the library of the Central State Archive, but uh, also in uh, different fonts. So I wanted to um, here. Yeah, sorry, I'm a little bit uh, confused <laughs> by the by the teams. Uh, I wanted just to show some uh, some of these books and documents that I uh, mentioned. Do you see my screen or not? Because I'm, I'm confused among this. Yes, yes, we do. see the presentation. Sorry? We see the presentation. The presentation. Do, do you see the PDF that I just opened? No. Wait, I'll do it again. Yeah, uh, when you have share, you have to the screen. You share screen, yeah. not the document. Yes. Here, you can see it now, yes? Yes. Uh, so I'm going on full screen mode. Just a moment. Okay. So, uh, this is a, a catalog of an exhibition that we uh, prepared together with Rezart. Uh, it's now four years ago. Uh, these are a collection of books, printed books and manuscripts uh, belonging to the religious communities of uh, Albania. Uh, this is a famous book, Ilirici Sacri, the seventh volume of it, uh, prepared by Daniele Farlato. It's uh, a book uh, containing the history of the, of the uh, Christian church and of the, of the of, uh, Christian church, first uh, Christian, but then also the history of the of the Catholic Church in Albania after the, the Great Schism of the uh, 11th century. It's part of our collections. Uh, this is the, a very important book uh, for the Albanian uh, culture and language. It is the Kunos Prophetarum, or the uh, Cave of the Prophets, uh, group of the prophets, uh, prepared by uh, Bishop Pietro Bogdano, written in Albanian. It is the first uh, the first work written in Albanian and not a translation, or mostly in its uh, biggest uh, biggest part of the text, it's not a uh, translation. Uh, printed in uh, Padova in the uh, 1685. Uh, it's again the same book. Uh, this is a manuscript coming from the collections of the uh, Catholic community. It's a handwritten copy of the uh, 19, beginning of the 19th century, so 1834. Uh, it's a, a tractate, uh, forgot that in, in English now the word. Uh, it is a manual on creating uh, uh, solar uh, clocks written in Italian, Italian, of course. Here, this is a grammar book of the Albanian language. It's a manuscript from, again, from the 19th century, uh, created, uh, copied or created in uh, 1862. 
This is a book of Byzantine music. It's written in Greek and also in Byzantine notation. Uh, it dates in the uh, 19th century. This is how the music of the used in the uh, Orthodox Church is written. Uh, in that time, we still have Greek language used in church, and also we have the uh, Byzantine notation still being in use until nowadays. So this is Codex Beratinus number one. It is the uh, oldest manuscript that we preserve at the Central State Archive. It dates in the middle of the sixth century. Uh, it was written in uh, parable parchments uh, with uh, silver capital, silver uh, letters. It contains the Gospel of Matthew and Mark. Uh, it is a uh, imperial production coming from uh, scriptoria that were working uh, in Constantinople or somewhere close by in uh, Asia Minor uh, under the orders of uh, the uh, imperial court. So it's an Im uh, imperial book uh, produced by the order of the emperor. Uh, it was detected or it is um, it was uh, found in in uh, Berat in the midst of the in the midst of the uh, 14th century, or at least that's the first uh, chronicle that uh, we have. Uh, it is known when it uh, moved from Constantinople to uh, to Berat. And the other manuscript below, it's a manuscript from the uh, 9th century. Uh, it was also uh, written on purple parchment, but. It parchment changed color uh, through time. Uh, it contains the four Gospels. Uh, it was written, the entire the book and the decorations were uh, written and worked on uh, silver color, and it is a unique, actually, piece of uh, such a type of manuscript existing nowadays in the world. Of course, it's uh, widely damaged, but we're lucky to still have it in this condition also. This is... Uh, lectionary of the uh, ninth uh, century uh, written in greek of course and used by the orthodox uh, community it's a book coming from berat uh, it is a uh, again a book of four gospels dating in this uh, 12th century produced in Constantinople, of course, and uh, brought uh, in Tirana from uh, Lora, if I'm not wrong. No, from Berat, sorry. It is uh, handwritten and hand-painted uh, on parchment. This is a manuscript from Lora. This is the uh, canon tables of uh, Eusebius, uh, dating again uh, in the uh, 12th century producing Constantinople, but uh, found before coming in uh, in Tirana, found in the city of Lora. Again, another four Gospels uh, book produced in Constantinople again in the mid of the 14th uh, of the 13th century. Another uh, uh, lecture that we dating in the uh, 13th century, written in Greek and used by the uh, Orthodox community. Again, some Byzantine music. Uh, it is the oldest Byzantine music book that we have, dating from uh, 1292. It was written in a specific Bombesin uh, paper. It is not the European paper that in that time has a, a watermark and uh, has the verjure and Bombesol. Uh, this is uh, a different type of paper uh, called also the, the Carta Greca or the Pergamena Greca. Uh, it's a peculiarity to have this uh, book in uh, Albania because uh, this type of paper ceased to be used uh, after the 13th century. Uh, and also, on the other hand, the uh, contents of the of the book is still unique to um, if, when compared to uh, other musical books uh, that were uh, preserved and are still preserved in Albania. Again, a uh, book of four Gospels. Uh, 
uh, produced in uh, southern Italy or the uh, area of uh, Otranto. That is a hint that we take from this uh, type of miniatures that uh, are found in this book. It dates in the myths of the uh, 14th century. And it is for those who deal with the history of book, it is a, a, a unique piece that shows the uh, cultural and religious relations of uh, southern Italy with the Western Balkans. This is a book written in the city of Berat. It's a book of sounds and it was write, uh, written on the year 1411 by Theodore, the logothet or the uh, counselor and secretary of, uh, of Berat. Uh, the uh, uh, Logothet of Berat wrote this book while he was in prison in the uh, castle of Briaz, somewhere at close by the city of Berat in the south and central Albania. And this is a nomocanon, uh, the canonic law, uh, the nomocanon of Manuel uh, Malaxos, dates in the year 1786 and it was written uh, somewhere in southern Albania or northern Greece. Uh, this is a philosophical book. Okay, no, this is not religion, but nevertheless, it's uh, an introduction uh, on logics uh, and uh, the um, exercises on logic. <clears throat> written in uh, copied, written in Greek and copied in the year 1776. Uh, okay, it's philosophy again. I will skip the books of the Orthodox community. So this is a uh, a book, uh, the only manuscript that we have written in Latin. I mean, a manuscript book. Uh, we have manuscript documents, of course, but we do not have many books. So this is a codex coming from the uh, northern city of Skodja that used to belong to the Catholic, uh, Catholic community uh, of Skodja. Uh, it contains uh, biographies of, of saints and uh, it was written in the 14th century. Now, this is the official date in our inventories. Uh, there are guesses that suggest that the book was, it's a uh, many, two, at least two books connected together in the same binding, uh, and the first part of it dates in the uh, 12th century. Uh, this is a, a funerary service uh, handwritten in uh, Voskopoja in uh, southern East Albania in the year uh, 1738. It is in the same time when uh, in the city uh, existed a printing house. The tradition of uh, copying and producing books by hand was so uh, active. And for, for that time it is very impressive, impressive to have still books uh, that are copied and also decorated in a very rich uh, way. Uh, let me skip some of them. So I would be eager of speaking for the entire day on this, but let's go at uh, some books coming from the uh, Muslim community. <coughs> So this is this book is part. This manuscript is part of the uh, collection of the Ottoman, Arab, and Persian uh, manuscripts. Uh, I cannot I cannot read the the Arabic title. Title I will not try because I, I'm I'm sure I will make a mistake there. Uh, the translation of the title is on learning uh, with wisdom, and it is a manuscript of the year 1857, written in Ottoman. Uh, this is a Quran. It is maybe the oldest Quran existing in the territory of uh, Albania. It was written, produced, or, and, uh, or copied in the myth uh, of the uh, 15th century. Uh, it coincides. It is the same period when the uh, the Ottoman armies arrived in central and uh, northern Albania. So it uh, is the same period of what we call. Uh, the, Sometimes it's called invasion, uh, sometimes it's called uh, co-governing. It, it depends on the uh, on the individual orientation or political that you want to, 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 uh, to use in this case. Nevertheless, the book is 
very important because uh, it shows that there is a connection between the state, uh, the army and the religion in the uh, midst of the 15th century. It is again a book written in uh, Arabic. Uh, it, these are the uh, narrative the stories of the uh, Prophet Yusuf. It was copied in the year 1646, so it's coming from the 17th century. Here we have the, uh, it's a narrative of the stories of the life of uh, Imam Ali, uh, copied in the 19th century. A richly decorated uh, Quran coming from the 19th century. Here we have a tafsir or the interpretation of uh, Quran. It was uh, copied in the year 1671. Uh, a book of poetry. It's uh, the, the so-called Divani uh, poetry copied in the year, I uh, mean, the, the work, uh, sorry, it, was not, not copied in the 15th century. The, uh, it was written in the 15th century and uh, it's a copy of the 19th century. Again, uh, this is a really large Quran. If you see the measures, it's 30 to 20 centimeters. It's a, a large and a thick book due to, to the large lines that it has. Uh, uh, copied in the 19th century. Uh, again, another Quran from the 19th century. It's uh, interesting the, the golden colors used there. Uh, and this is the legend of uh, uh, yeah, it's poetry from Muhammad Fuzul, translated into Albanian. Uh, it is Albanian language written with uh, Ottoman characters. Uh, a book of the 18th century, uh, translation or interpretation of the stories uh, of the uh, of the Quran. This is a book coming from the Bektashi community. I have to move down in order to see the uh, yeah the title because I do not remember all of this by heart. So it's uh, the the words of Rabbani uh, per, uh, copied in the year 1780 on paper and widely decorated with with gold. Uh, this is a story of. Uh, Leila and Mejnum. Uh, is a copy of the year 1803. Now, if you remember the song of uh, the song uh, Leila from uh, Eric Clapton, uh, it's the story of Leila and Mejnum, two lovers like Romeo and Juliet, who uh, were uh, who could not uh, get married and could not. Uh, get together so the story comes the story of the song comes also from uh, these manuscript story on itself dates back in the uh, 11th 12th century but this is a copy of the same story of Leila and Mejnum uh, from the beginning of the 19th century and there is a decoration used widely in the uh, uh, in the Bekashi manuscripts it's a uh, the decorative and functional uh, image trying to uh, give a clue on the uh, movements that the uh, human soul has to make toward perfection, going from the outside to the inside to the center to the core of uh, purification and holiness, if uh, possible. 
uh, come back to the screen. Here, back again. So this is the presentation that we had prepared together with my colleague uh, Nazani. I hope it was, uh, I, I met your expectations, or if not, please do ask questions. Are there any questions for Sokod and Rezar? I think uh, it was uh, very interesting all the, uh, the information that we we'll gained to, today about uh, the Albanian state of Shire. Uh, even we are here in uh, in Albania, we don't know everything about them and their collections. So it's very interesting. Maybe there are questions, uh, in particular about uh, the documentation uh, in religious studies. Yes, Constantinos. Yes. Hi, um, I, I do not really have a question. I was I was very happy about the presentation. Thank you very much. That was really ma, ma, ma comprehensive. I just wanted to mention that there are some additional manuscripts and also old prints kept at the National Library of Tirana, uh, which share similar stories to the ones that uh, ma, uh, you know, a while ago we we had just just this piece of information. Thank you. Yes, uh, I think that was very interesting, and uh, having uh, image of the books uh, also uh, it's uh, uh, fulfills of the objectives of the webinar other than uh, speaking in general. Uh, feel free if you have any questions. I'm sending you uh, at the, uh, the chat also the form about the webinar. Uh, I'll send it also by mail as you have been registered, uh, but uh, you can use also your time to fill it. Okay. There are no questions because uh, uh, when our questions uh, maybe uh, we resolve some issues that you can have about the presentation. But uh, I want to thank you, Sokol, uh, and uh, all the state archive of Albania that always uh, sustain us uh, in our studies and uh, hope that residents will, will be a bridge for all the scholars, for, not only from Albania, but also for other countries to know more about uh, our culture, not our religious culture, but uh, in general about Albanian culture. Uh, if there are no questions, I will say goodbye. Thank you, Sokol, thank you, Rezard, and thank you, everyone, for being part of uh, this webinar. Alessandra, if you want to add something? <laughs> uh, yes, I wanted to thank for your great presentation with those wonderful manuscripts. I like so much. Yeah, really, you have wonderful sources and documents. Thank you. We hope to have you here in Albania and to, to see it all together, Alexandra. <laughs> I would love this so much, so, so much. Yes. <laughs> thank you, Alexandra, and thank you everyone for being a part of this webinar. Have a nice afternoon. You too, thank you. <laughs>